Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2017 here in Busan in the Republic of Korea. I've got the great pleasure of being in the studio today with Professor Umar Gabad Damata, who is Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Communications Commission. Professor Damata, thank you very much for being with us in the studio again today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about broadband. I think broadband is a, is a key subject here in telecommunications, and I yes. think it's, uh, it's certainly a, 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 something very much uh, in, uh, in your sights. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the latest progress of the National Broadband Network in Nigeria. Well, thank you very much, uh, Max. As you are aware, the National Broadband Plan for the years 2013, 2018, mandated the Niger Nigerian Communications Commission to um, supervise the deployment of broadband infrastructure you know, across the whole country. And we are also mandated to ensure we attain 30% broadband penetration by the year 2018. Um, according to figures, the recent figures released by the ITU UNESCO Broadband Commission for Sustainable Development, we are at 22%. You know, so we have eight percentage points, you know, to go. Um, it's not looking like a toll order at all, uh, but to achieve the the target of 30 percent penetration, we still need to deploy more and more infrastructure across the country. And it is for this reason that you know the the Nigerian Communications Commission supervises the deployment of broadband infrastructure in seven zones of the country. We deliberately, you know, divided the country into seven zones. And each zone, you know, has been assigned an infrastructure company to deploy broadband, you know, infrastructure. We have, in the first phase of this exercise, licensed two zones already. The Lagos zone, you know, which is our ICT hub in the country, and the north central zone of the country where the capital of the country is located. So we have five more zones, you know, to license. And these are three zones in the southern part of the country, the south, south, southeast and southwest, and two more zones in the northern part of the country, the northwest and the north uh, east zones. Okay. So um, as, 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 as with respect to broadband, we don't have any problem with that. All the available broadband that is needed to ensure the penetration, you know, uh, takes place, that is the, 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 the target of 30%, you know, we have since assigned the spectrum, you know, to interested operators. So the commission, and as I'm speaking to you, does not even have any more spectrum, you know, to assign, you know, with a view to achieving the target what we needed to assign in order to ensure attainment of the target has been done. What remains to be done is the broadband infrastructure. The interesting thing about this deployment is, you know, this is going to be a deployment that is going to be done, you know, a, a consistent with a public-private partnership initiative. There is even a subsidy component attached, you know, to the licensing condition for the Impraco license, you know, and the commission will be there to monitor what we call guided develop, uh, deployments because we know where the gaps are in the country. You know, we're ready for this exercise. You know, we're interested in ensuring we achieve our target by 2018. So the commission, to that extent, has established a broadband implementation monitoring committee in order to ensure, like I said, guided deployment where we have gaps, what we call fiber, broadband fiber gaps in the country. And as soon as the exercise of assigning, you know, the licenses, is, you know, is completed, then we will, you know, move into action to ensure, you know, we monitor the deployment and release the subsidies consistent with milestones. I was going to ask you, what are the key challenges to the national broadband rollout? The, the major challenges, you know, one of the major challenges is right of way. Um, we have a document, you know, and this document, um, you know, is a document that 
came about when the National Economic Council under the chairmanship of the vice president of the country met and agreed on regime of taxes to be charged, you know, in the process of deployment of ICT infrastructure across the country. So this, are what, uh, this is what we call harmonized regime of taxation, of taxes, if you like. But unfortunately, signatories, you know, to this document are not respecting provisions of the document. You know, we have state governments and local governments charging prohibitive amounts for deployment of fiber. This is, you know, a major challenge. We have willful, uh, you know, damage, you know, to existing, you know, broadband infrastructure, willful, unintended dual road constructions, okay? And this is like setting, 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 setting us, you know, back. Even as we try to deploy more, what has already been deployed at, and is, you know, on the ground is being subjected to all kinds of, you know, um, destructions, at times, you know, willful, other times, you know, unintended. Okay, so those are the challenges. Another major challenge is that, you know, the, 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 there is a challenge of scarcity of foreign exchange. Okay, uh, when we want the foreign exchange that is necessary to import, you know, equipment, even the fiber itself, even though it is cheap, by the way, the fiber is cheaper compared to the amount of money you pay to dig, right. you know, trenches, you know, for, for, for the fiber. Okay, so, so, so these are challenges, you know, that we have to contend with, but we are not really, um, you know, we are not discouraged by them. We engage, you know, the, the federal government, the state governments, as well as the local government, you know, to ensure that we sensitize them of the importance of embracing this important project, you know, for, for the country, you know, because when you, in the final analysis, compare the benefits of broadband services when eventually these are rolled out, you know, to the limited benefits you get, you know, from taxes, okay, you know, you can be able for yourself to, to you know, to decide which one you think will outweigh the other. Obviously, when you have broadband services being rolled out, empowering citizens, okay, and so on and so forth, you get more money, you get more revenue compared to the limited amount you get, you know, from enforcing taxes on telecommunications companies, you know, who want to deploy more broadband infrastructure. And what about broadband policies and regulations? Perhaps you could share some of those that, that, that might, uh, that you're, you're implementing that might help to accelerate so the, the, the rollout. The, the, the policies by government are not limited to broadband. They are relevant to broadband, quite okay. And I will give you an example. Recently, the federal government introduced what we call the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. And in this plan, there is an important role assigned to the Nigerian Communications Commission, again, okay, to ensure, you know, deployment of broadband infrastructure and the attraction of those provisions of this plan i'm talking about the economic recovery and growth plan of the federal government is you have you know incentives for investors to come in you know including 30 percent reduction in company income tax you know plus a list of other incentives waivers of you know on you know uh, income duties for importation of you know the infrastructure equipment and so on and so forth so we have been inf you know informing the, the the investors at this important forum about all this you know very good incentives by the nigerian government as well as the ease of doing business you know th this has you know really improved significantly there is an executive order as i'm talking to you on transparency and efficiency in public service delivery. And this is intended to ensure that approvals are granted, you know, without delay. There's even, you know, a disciplinary measure that can be brought bear to, to via on agencies of government deliberately, you know, refusing to grant approvals. And then access to agencies, you know, like the Nigerian Communications Commission by investors to the, Niger you know, to the Nigerian 
Investment and Promotion Council. This is easily facilitated. Information is available. We have a one-stop shop where you can acquire all the items of information I'm giving you. You know, and this is verifiable. And uh, you know, we're waiting for the investors to come in. You know, join us in a public partnership. You know, you, you know, versus to ensure you know we attain our targets. Talking about investment, obviously you've made an investment here at uh, ITU Telecom World. You've got a lovely pavilion here. Nigeria has a great pavilion here. I just wanted to find out what's the value of attending events uh, such as this. It is very important, you know, to to attend events, you know, like the ITU Telecoms World. And we have been doing this, you know, way back. You know, our relationship with the ITU, you know, you know, it's, it's way back. I don't know. I, I think it was established even before I was born. Okay, so it's, it was established many, many years ago. And there's a reason why we attach great importance to attendance at these events. One is to be able to learn from global best practices. You know, in a way and manner that we can bring this to bear, you know, in our country to solve contentious problems of, you know, uh, that, you know, problems that transfer to degrade, among other things, you know, quality of service, right of way issues, okay, and so on and so forth. We also learn from what policies, you know, other countries, you know, you know, have in place, which we think we can either, you know, bring in total and implement same in our country, or modify to adopt peculiarities, you know, in our country. So the, the benefits are immense, you know, that, you know, we, we, we come with our SMEs, you know, our, you know, small and medium scale entrepreneurs. Last year we came with about eight, this year we have come with six, two short, but what innovative ideas they have put together and are showcasing in this event, you know, have attracted a lot of attention and it, they have generated a lot of interest. So we will continue to put premium on attendance, you know, at these, you know, uh, events, because we feel it is an important um, way of showcasing our achievements in, in the sector, as well as, you know, getting ideas on how best we can move the telecommunication sector in the country. Well, thank you very much for sharing your valuable insights here with us. We're very pleased that you're here and look forward to catching up with you again in the future. And thank you very much for being with us in the studio today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank I you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Thank you.